trouble with Sword Sangi and the defense wall and the pipe system. You know, the pipes go out from the power plants to serve 30,000 households, not only Grindavik, also the Southern Peninsula. And these pipes serve them with hot water, which gives the households hot water. And it is the heating system. There's no gas heating system or oil heating system in the homes. So no backup system. Even you can't heat with electric because that would blow the electric system. So what went wrong? The lava was crossing the road, Grindavika Vigua, and then it was flowing over the hot water pipes. So households have been without heat and water in the winter, in the cold, for several days. And then there were power outages because all the electric heaters were sold out and officials said, don't do that. You're blowing the grid, only one heater per household. Do not charge your electric cars. And it was creating a little bit of a chaos. So there is a construction technician who has worked for HS Orker. That's the power company. His name is Skuli Augustson. And here comes the thing. Back in 2020, he has already warned about the fact that exactly this could happen, that these pipes are vulnerable. And he has gone to the civil defense and to the emergency responders and he has warned about a potential lava flow that could damage the pipeline. And exactly that has happened do the, during the eruption that happened a week ago. And he drew attention to this basically in 2020. And he said he was emailing again, again, and again to the public safety, to HS Orca, to the police, and also to the town of Grindavik. And the last email he wrote was just this December, on December 29th. So, of course, he's wondering why was there no reaction at all? And he states that he believes that a big mistake has been made when the defense walls were built around, around the Swartzengi area, around the Swartzengi power plant. Um, so, he says... Um, this defense wall that has already come from Zilingerfell and around the power plant and the settlements in Swartzengi only diverts the lava to the road to Grindaviko Vigua and it dismantles Grindaviko Vigua and the hot uh, water pipes that are connected to Rakyanis Bear, Sojunis Bear, and Voga. And also it cuts an electric line from Swartzengi and least of all also cuts cold, the cold water pipes to the power plant because the cold water pipe is very shallow um, in the soil. And so that's the main water intake for the whole Sodorns area. Um, so he says there is no point in putting new hot water pipes deep in the ground in this area. So what he basically says is the way these defenses are being built, if there is another big eruption with a big lava flow and a new fissure, Swartzangi would be isolated and no one could get there because all the roads around it could be destroyed by a big lava flow. So the only way to get in there would be with helicopters. <laughs> the road would be covered with lava on both sides of Swartzengi. And so everything could have been cut off, the cold water, the hot water, and the electricity. And now guys think about what that would mean for the Blue Lagoon, it also would be cut off. And we had that one photographer mention that they just made it out through the road and the, shortly after the lava was destroying the road behind them. So are they or did they create their own trap? It sounds a little bit like this. So why didn't they listen to him if he said that since 2020 and then they started building that defense wall um, in December or November? So why did he make these measurements and these predictions? So he says 
he, he hasn't been contracted to do this, but he has a very strong connection to Grindavik and he has worked a lot for HS Orca and he said he made these predictions and measurements out of affection for that company, but also for Grindavik. And he says he has also worked a lot for the Blue Lagoon. Um, so he said he spent a lot of time in Grindavik as a boy. And he says that's actually the reason why he did this in 2020. And he said, then two people contacted me, one from the emergency uh, line and from the police. And they got this sent to them in 2020. But since then, I haven't heard anything from them. So they contacted him briefly, but then silence. He says, you know, after the earthquake swarms of the recent earthquakes in the area that he has sent another mail at the end of December, where he warned again about what exactly has happened now with the last eruptions. And he says that nothing was taken into account. He also says the height measurements were not taken into account when the defense walls were built. They had, could have built um, a defense wall from Selingafell to Gikku's head, but instead they built the wall around the structures in Swartsengi. And he says it wasn't needed when they would have considered where the eruptions have been taking place over the past thousand years. Um, he says it can certainly be understood that they built the defense wall around the power plant, but he says the, there are many interests at stake, but he, he says that things could have been done much better by making shorter walls and more targeted walls to divert the lava. And he says he's not the only one who has pointed out that this might not be so great. Also, Thorwald with Thorwaldson, who we have heard about a lot, he has, he's been right with a lot of predictions and things that he has said. So he also said um, or warned about this scenario um, and also presented a lava flow model that also showed that these pipes were at risk. Um, and he says the height of the craters where it erupted, they were about 75 meters above sea level, where, while the height where lava flows towards the Grindavico Vigo, the height is only 25 meters. And then the Swartzengia is just 25 meters away. So he says his prediction is the next lava flow will also come into this direction. And everything basically has the same height there. So the lava can go over Grindavik Vigo and then take the road towards Grindavik. Um, or even towards Keflavik, towards Fitjum, because those areas are all similar in height. So that is real, towards Keflavik. I mean, guys, it gets worse and worse. So, and since this lava has also been a high speed lava, it makes it even more unpredictable. So things are really scary in my opinion. And Thorwald or Thorwalds and he's the professor of volcanology. He has criticized just recently the government's delay in taking preventative measurements due to these volcanic eruptions. Um, of course, he says at the same time that the Icelanders are excellent in reaction, and they are, and we have seen it. Um, but he says it, it is also necessary to be just as good in reaction when it comes to preventative measures. And he says it is absolutely clear that the period of volcanic activity on the Reykjanes Peninsula is not over, um, even despite the fact that the current eruption that we have just seen um, has come to an end. Um, he says it's pretty much by the book. Um, it seems that this was one of the shorter eruption, maybe the shortest, so he expects that the next ones might be la longer and the land rise has already started again. And, and so 
there is this risk that this situation will repeat itself and that we have another eruption in about three weeks. And of course, you cannot say if it's going to be a shorter, a longer one or an equally long eruption, but he expects it to be similar. But he says the area was not well prepared at all. So he was asked whether he thinks that the government has been sleeping regarding preventative measures on the Rakhianis Peninsula because of the recent um, eruptions and especially um, in regards to the pipeline that was destroyed and caused such a big problem and lack of hot water. Um, he said that in general, we were not adequately prepared. And he says, we have to change the way of thinking. He says, we're excellent in our reaction, but we have to get excellent in preventative measures. And we have to start thinking our way, because if we have good preventative measures, we can track the possible effects of these volcanic eruptions. So, um, he says the society's attitude and reaction to these eruptions plays a big role in the fact that preventative measures have not been taken in such a targeted manner. He says when people don't see things physically affect their surroundings with the naked eye, they it doesn't have such a big impact to them and people are much calmer. And he says now it is time to change this way of thinking and this attitude and he says you know in that context the area of Reykjana sprout is in immediate danger he says it is necessary to initiate work on preventative measures and we need to start now and he says that area of eruptions is not over. And he says, if there is an eruption north of Stora Skokfell, the Rikianus Broad is in imminent danger. And he says, that's also another road. And as it stands now, Sutnur Stranda Vegur is closed and nobody goes through Grindavik. But if also Rikianus Broad closes, Sudurnison will be isolated and he says reminding that we can see eruptions on the Reykjanes Peninsula basically anywhere so there can be eruptions in other areas as well. In his opinion the cost of preparing defenses is only a fraction of the cost of trying to save or protect infrastructure in the area. So he says there was no talk of building defenses all over the Reykjanes Peninsula, um, but it would be good to at least have plans ready. Um, and then he was asked about the government's attitude towards scientists' call for preventative measures. So he said the government's attitude towards the scientists when they were given warning and when they were calling for preventative measures has improved after the recent eruptions um, and, and yeah I mean if it's not improving then you can call them really negligent and he says people are starting to pay some attention to this because now they can see it for themselves. I think the eruption on January 14th has made a huge difference when they saw the lava flowing into Grindavik and actually burning down three homes. So both the conversation and the cooperation between the government, geoscientists, engineers, and social scientists has to be much better and broader. So he wants the conversation started ASAP. And he says the, the Icelandic society can also do much better. So the community can take a greater part in pushing for preventative measures, as well as learning about the effects of the eruptions and their consequences. So by participating in this, he thinks that the people will become more willing to deal with these things. The construction for a new pipeline has begun at the beginning of this year, and uh, 
there has been criticism from other areas that the hot water safety for areas like the Keflavik airport and, and the other towns in that area was not considered way earlier. Um, so additional piping should have definitely been started much earlier. Um, and so people are realizing this right now. And, and of course, they're struggling with the thought that it might not be ensured that they have a guaranteed hot water supply to heat the houses in the future. Um, so a lot needs to be done and it will cost a lot of money. So Iceland is a small country and uh, we will have to see how they will be able to deal with that, but they have to deal with this. We have seen this in the last eruption. I mean, having no heat in the homes uh, when it's cold in the winter, that's definitely something that should not happen again and should not happen to Reykjavik, for example, where there's hundreds of thousands of people in there. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you for your support for my channel through the supers, through the coffees you keep buying me on my buymeacoffee.com website. So thanks for that. I hope to see you very soon. Please leave this video a like and check out the videos in the end screen. And uh, I see you very soon. Bye-bye.